Fighting is flaring up in the DRC again between M23 rebels and Congolese troops and its allies. Almost half a million people have fled their homes over the past six weeks, 200,000 of whom are cut off from humanitarian aid. So what are they fighting over? For that, we need to go back to 1994, to the Rwandan genocide. Over the course of 100 days, Hutu extremists slaughtered 800,000 people, mostly members of the Tutsi minority group, but also political opponents. Under current President Paul Kagame, the Tutsi-dominated Rwandan Patriotic Front, which was founded in Uganda, went back into Rwanda and took control of Kigali. The violence ended, but briefly. Fearing retribution, nearly 2 million Hutus fled across the border into Zaire, as the Democratic Republic of Congo was called then. They settled in the North Kivu and South Kivu provinces. So did some of those Hutu extremists who committed the genocide. They began organizing their own militias. Pressure built up between Hutu and Tutsi militias and in 1996, Rwanda began the first Congo war when it invaded Zaire, whose president at the time was Mobutu Sese Seko. Rwanda basically justified the invasion by saying Zaire was harboring Hutu extremists and that Mobutu was helping them. Rwanda's invasion was backed mostly by Uganda, then Angola and Burundi and had a lot of help from Zaire's then opposition leader Laurent Kabila in outing Mobutu who fled overseas. Kabila was made Zaire's president and changed the country's name back to the Democratic Republic of Congo. This should ideally have ushered in peace, but Kabila faced domestic pressure over Rwanda's sway over its internal politics. So, he began expelling all Tutsis from the Congolese government, booting out foreign troops from the country and allowed Hutu armed groups to operate again. Rwanda invaded again in 1998, kicking off the Second Congo War, also known as Africa's First World War, as it drew in nine African states and saw a proliferation of dozens of militia groups. Kabila was eventually assassinated in 2001 in a coup attempted by his own aides, and his son Joseph Kabila wound up taking power. He ended the war in 2003 when Rwanda, Uganda and DRC thrashed out peace agreements, but by then an estimated 3 million people had lost their lives. They more or less involved the DRC disarming Hutu and ex-Rwandan army militias with the help of a UN force. In return, Rwanda would pull its forces out of the DRC, but there was still violence brewing in the eastern Congo due to Tutsi militias still operating there, one in particular being the National Congress for the Defense of the People CNDP. Long story short, on March 23, 2009, the DRC and the CNDP signed a peace agreement where Congo's army would integrate former CNDP troops. Again, peace was elusive. In 2013, a few hundred former CNDP soldiers created M23. Naming itself after the agreement, it accused the Congolese government of failing to implement and began an offensive. The Rwanda-backed M23 lost that round and it was dormant until March 2022, when it began a new offensive. At 2023's end, they've been gaining quite a bit of ground occupying most of North Kivu, and the DRC is alleged to regularly work alongside the Hutu militias in its fight against the M23. Meanwhile, Congolese Tutsis have long been threatened by militias saying they felt unfairly blamed and in danger. So that's a story of how DRC, a country with a wealth of invaluable resources that make modern life possible, got screwed over by its little neighbour despite being 89 times bigger.